The episode opens up with Krill Chancellor Tellia engaged in a meeting with Mocklins, who propose an alliance as a formidable front against the growing Kalon threat. After being removed from the Union membership, Mocklins have decided to form allies with the Krill to act against the Kalons as well as the Union. However, Tellia agrees to consider the proposal only if it's an equal partnership. Having no other choice, the Mocklin agree, despite their love for women leading the crew. Meanwhile, the Union squares off against the Kalon. We see Mercer and his crew join a bevy of Union vessels to fight against the Kalon. Isaac, Charlie and Lamar oversee a powerful device that can target Kalon's weakness. Suddenly, the weapon detonates, instantly destroying all Kalon ships surrounding the Union vessels. Later, Mercer, Kelly, Charlie and Isaac meet with admirals on Earth to discuss the capabilities of the Kalon eradicating device. Charlie insists they can upgrade said device to incinerate all Kalon instantaneously. When Admiral Perry suggests they eliminate the Kalon, Mercer questions the ethics of committing species genocide. Admiral Halsey asserts that the Union Council will meet to debate the next step regarding whether they should utilize the device to wipe out the Kalon for good or hold on to it. After a tense, heated debate, the Union Council have decided to utilize the device as a bargaining chip. They'll disclose its existence to the Kalon and threaten to use it if necessary if the latter doesn't agree to stop the violence. Later, Halsey accompanies Orville to approach Kalon. The Kalon primary grants them access to the homeworld. Once on Kalon, Halsey gives the Kalon primary an ultimatum. Either the Kalon cease the violence, or the Union wipes them out with the device. Primary agrees to the terms, and there is a ceasefire between the two parties on the horizon. While the crew members are celebrating their success on Earth in Kelly's late father's cabin, few Union lieutenants break into the guarded quarters containing Charlie and Isaac's device. They steal it and depart Earth in a shuttle. The following day, Halsey informs Kelly and Claire that the device has been stolen. It is revealed that Admiral Perry was behind the stealing. Elsewhere, Perry turns over the device to Telia, believing that Krill and Mocklins will do whatever it takes to eradicate the Kalon. For betraying the Union, Perry plans to surrender himself to them after returning to Earth. As Perry flies away, Telia orders his murder. Suddenly, Perry's shuttle explodes. Once Mercer and Kelly arrive to examine where the device was stolen, Halsey informs them of Perry's betrayal and the krill Mocklin alliance. While departing Earth, Bordas tells them about Dr. Kalba, a brilliant Mocklin scientist who can operate the device without Charlie and Isaac. Fearing the krill Mocklin to use the device soon, Mercer contacts the Kalon primary and proposes they forge a temporary alliance of their own to combat the Mocklin krill forces. Since the krill Mocklin are protecting the device and planning to use it against the Kalons, primary agrees to the alliance. Later, primary and two other Kalons aboard the Orville for a brainstorming session. Soon, he joins Kelly, Kiali, Isaac, and Charlie take a shuttle to the station where the krill Mocklin are guarding the device. Meanwhile, Lamar and Malloy lead a fleet of fighter jets to blast away the enemies. Suddenly, the cruise shuttle loses a significant amount of power, causing them to utilize the egress packs and dive from the shuttle to the station. After our ground team arrives at the outpost, they take on a flurry of Mocklin Krill soldiers. Telia orders Dr. Kalba to hurry it along with activating the weapon. Amid the insanity of the battle, Telia attacks Kelly and a fight ensues between the two. Meanwhile, Charlie, Isaac and the Kalon primary storm Dr. Kalba's quarters, with primary shooting a handful of soldiers. Charlie and Isaac seize control from Dr. Kalba, but he reveals that they cannot override the activation or deactivate the quantum core. Therefore, Charlie hijacks the system to attempt to find a loophole. Primary kills Dr. Kalba and some of the Mocklin soldiers, who try to escape. However, when another Mocklin tries to fire on Charlie, Isaac shoots the weapon out of the Mocklin's hands, but refrains from killing the latter. The Kalon Primary wonders why Isaac didn't murder the Mocklin. Isaac informs Primary that murdering the Mocklin wasn't essential. Elsewhere, Kiali arrives to incapacitate Telia before she takes out Kelly. Then, the two ladies reunite with Isaac and Charlie with a handcuffed Telia in tow. Just then, Charlie reveals the only way to stop the device activation is to destroy the quantum core, since the act will decimate the outpost and that portion of the planet causing massive casualties. Charlie asks Kelly and the others to leave the planet. Kelly orders Charlie to set the explosion on a timer, but Charlie tells it's impossible. Hence, Charlie volunteers to stay behind and disable the weapon at all costs. As soon as Kelly and the others take a Krill ship off the planet, Charlie gears the quantum core to explode. She sacrificed herself for the sake of millions of lives. Later, Kelly hails Orville from Telia's Krill shuttle, 
and informs Mercer about Charlie's brave sacrifice. Once everyone's back together, the Kalon primary questions why Charlie sacrificed herself. Kelly vehemently defends Charlie, saying she wanted to save the Kalons despite her hatred for them. Also, Isaac reassures Primary that these humans are nothing like their creators. He even claims that the humans he's working with are his friends and cause no harm to him. Later, Mercer visits Telia in the brig, where he reveals they plan to transfer her to Earth, where she'll stand trial for war crimes. Since the possibility is she'll be imprisoned after the trials, Mercer urges her to allow him to care for Ania, their daughter. Telia agrees but only if he lets her go free. Expectedly, Mercer doesn't take Telia up on her offer. While on Earth, the Kalon primary negotiates with the admirals and Union president. The Union offers a seat on the council and Union membership to the Kalon if they assure to avoid violence against other planets. After all that Charlie did for the Kalons, Primary seems to have realized their mistake. Although the Kalons don't have emotions, as a result, Primary agrees to the Union's terms and conditions. Back on the Orville, the crew holds a funeral for Charlie. Mercer delivers an eulogy, informing the ship members that the Union will award Charlie a posthumous Medal of Valor for her bravery. After Mercer, Isaac steps in to speak for Charlie. Throughout the speech, he emphasizes the importance of Charlie's life. He ends the touching speech acknowledging Charlie's sacrifice that saved Kalons and paved the way for an essential alliance between two previously warring parties. In the next scene, Isaac interacts with cheerful fleet officers in the corridors and assists Lamar with some engineering duties. Then, he gets a banana from the food synthesizer for his lady love, Claire. Following that, Isaac enters the bridge, where Bordas explains the importance of the renewal ceremony for Mocklins wishing to reconfirm themselves as mates. While Malloy makes fun of the strange ritual, Kiali believes it sounds lovely. As the other crew members agree to attend the ritual, Isaac also wishes to attend for observational purposes. Later, the ship lands on List Act 2 for Bordas and Clyden's renewal ceremony, officiated by Mercer while other crew members are in attendance. After Mercer commences the festivities, Bordas and Clyden run naked through the forest. The objective is for Bordas to catch Clyden. Once he overpowers Clyden, they made in the presence of Mother Nature. The crew members are present as witnesses to the consummation. Next, the Mockling couple emerges from the forest, victorious in their renewal. They stand for a long time with their foreheads touching, causing the crew to clap awkwardly, unsure how to react to the event. Meanwhile, Isaac appears to have been taken aback by the ritual. Back aboard the Orville, Isaac proposes to Claire in the mess hall. Later, Claire confronts Isaac, wondering if he realizes the enormous responsibility that comes with marriage. Although Isaac is unable to express love and affection, he nevertheless wishes to protect the Finn lineage for eternity. Also, he vows to look after her kids when Claire dies, since she's a human and will age and die eventually. Afterwards, Claire seeks advice from Kelly and Kiali at a girl's night out. The trio also gets Mercer's take on the situation, as they rank the benefits and drawbacks of marrying Isaac. Mercer suggests Claire talk to her sons first. In the next scene, Lysella hails Mercer and the crew. Lysella is taken aboard the ship as they get close to Sargas 4. She begs Mercer and Kelly to grant her asylum aboard the Orville, because the situation on Sargas 4 has worsened over time. Mercer and Kelly permit her stay with a condition that she can't return to her homeworld. Meanwhile, Claire prepares to tell her sons Marcus and Ty about Isaac's marriage proposal. Since they have already heard the rumor of Isaac proposing their mother, they enthusiastically give her their blessings. In the following scene, Kelly takes Lysella under her wing and explains how things operate in their world. Lysella finds it difficult to conceptualize a non-capitalist society. Also, Kelly takes her to the simulation room to show her what they do for entertainment and recreates the asteroid's interior. Afterwards, Kelly goes to Claire's quarters, where the latter asks her to be her maid of honor. On the other hand, Isaac asks Malloy to be his best man, but Bordas butts in, claiming he was a hoot and a half on Mockless. Much to Malloy's dismay, Isaac accepts Bordas's offer to be his best man. Next, Isaac invites the Kalon primary and the entire Kalon fleet to his wedding. As part of their ship tour, Kelly later shows Lysella the remarkable quantum core. While struggling to comprehend the magnitude of this new world, Lysella confesses she feels like she's abandoning her friends on Sargas 4. However, Kelly reassures her it's merely a survivor's guilt. Elsewhere, Malloy vents to Mercer and Lamar about Isaac choosing Bordas over him as his best man. Suddenly, the sandwich he sent through the Aronov device three months ago reappears, interrupting their conversation. Later, Lysella joins Kelly and Kiali while they plan for Claire's bachelorette party. 
When Lysella discovers the onboard food synthesizer, she believes the Orville should make their potentially life-saving technology available to those in need. On Sargas IV, hunger and poverty are still major problems. However, Kelly and Kiali highlight the repercussions of interfering in an underdeveloped society's technological progress. So, Lysella excuses herself, reconsidering her decision to join the crew. In the next scene, the men attend Isaac's bachelor party in the simulation room, which appears to be a Vegas-style establishment. Suddenly, Bordas enters the stage dressed as Elvis Presley and sings. Meanwhile, the ladies party it up at Claire's bachelorette party. They have even programmed a Kalon stripper to make the bachelorette memorable. The next day, Lysella wishes to return to Sarga's 4. Mercer is reluctant to send her back, however Kelly convinces him saying Lysella won't be able to explain about the advanced technologies to her world. When Lysella boards a shuttle, Kiali and Kelly find a comm scanner in her bag and learn that she has downloaded blueprints for several technological devices. Then, Kelly takes Lysella back to the simulation room, where she gives a history lesson about what happens when the technological growth of an underdeveloped society is facilitated. The simulation's current world collapsed five years ago after the Union interfered with its progression. What was once a thriving community has degenerated into debris and decay now. Thus, Kelly explains that it is only their responsibility to observe and never interfere. After learning the ramifications, Lysella decides to stay aboard the Orville. Meanwhile, Mercer finds thousands of Kalon ships stationed outside the Orville. But, he learns from the Kalon primary that Isaac invited them to his wedding. Since the Orville ship can't fit so many Kalons, only a few selected are invited on board the ship while the rest will watch the broadcast of the wedding in their ships. Next, the wedding ceremony begins with a stunning outdoor setting in the simulation room. As Mercer stands with Isaac in his human form, Bordas and Kelly are next to them as the best man and maid of honor, respectively. While Ty walks down the aisle as the ring bearer, Marcus accompanies his mother next. On one side of the aisle are the members of the Orville, and on the other are Kalons. After Mercer delivers a short speech, Claire and Isaac recite their vows, exchange their rings and kiss each other. Finally, the two are married. Later, while the crew attend a fun-filled reception, they are surprised by the arrival of Alara who is present there for a brief moment to give her best wishes to Isaac and Claire. Next, Bordas toasts and gives his best man speech, which is kind of dull. When Isaac notices Bordas's speech isn't going well, he asks Malloy to speak. Expectedly, Malloy delivers a hilarious and heartwarming monologue. Then, he follows that up with a beautiful musical performance. While watching the performance, everyone seems to display love and affection as they stay huddled together like a sweet family. Even Mercer and Kelly hold each other's hands. The episode ends with everyone enjoying Malai's performance and hoping for a better future. Subscribe and hit that like button to help our channel grow. Turn the notifications on so you won't miss any of our new videos. Thanks for watching.